Hi, in this video we're going to look at using an app to do some 3D graphing. So I want you to be sure that you are comfortable graphing at least some surfaces by hand before you jump to the computer. Sometimes students get too reliant on the computer and you're not going to have a computer available during exams. So there are some simple surfaces like some of the examples we looked at like what's on your checkup that you really do need to be able to graph by hand. Um, but there'll be other times where you want to use a computer to help. So we're going to show you an app that I like to use. You can use something else if you really like, but I'm going to show you what I like to use. Uh, so I've just got a browser window open here and the app I like to use is called Calcplot 3D. So you can see I've searched for that here before. Calcplot 3D. So if you just do a Google search for Calcplot 3D, uh, you'll find it. And uh, I've got that pulled up right here. Okay, so this is the default window when you open the app and you can see there's a surface there. Uh, I can click on it and rotate it around. I'm just using my mouse to rotate that around. Uh, so there's all kinds of different things I can do. Uh, I can type in a new equation. I can do all kinds of different things here. So I'm going to reset the app. I clicked reset there. It'll reset the axes back to where it was. Uh, and you can see here it's got a z equals, so something's a little checked here, and z equals. And so I can type whatever I want in this box and as long as it understands my syntax then it'll graph that. I'm going to graph a little bit simpler surface just to start with. This is one actually you should be able to graph by hand. z equals x squared plus y squared. You should recognize that as a paraboloid that opens up. All right, so you can see here uh, it's going way off the screen and so I'm going to just talk a little bit about some window settings that you might want to use uh, to help you kind of see what's happening here with the graph. So up here above the uh, where you've input a graph there's some different things that you can look at and we'll look at some different things really throughout this semester. This um, app is actually designed for teaching multivariable calculus or Calc 3. So uh, it's really set up to do a lot of things and illustrate a lot of things that we will use throughout the semester. All right, the first thing I'm going to do here is click on this first thing and you'll see that there are some boxes that came up here where I can change my scale on my X and Y and Z axes here. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that so we can see how that works. So I just clicked in the box and I'm just going to change uh, instead of going negative 2 to 2, I'm going to go negative 3 to 3 in the X and Y directions. And then in the Z direction, so we have some sense this paraboloid uh, Z equals X squared plus Y squared is going to open upward. So I'm not going to really have negative Z values on this graph. So I'm going to just set that to negative 1. I don't want the graph to be right down around the bottom of the screen, uh, but at negative 1. And then the other thing I might think about is how big I want that Z axis to go. Um, if I've got my X and Y going from negative 3 to 3 and just kind of thinking about uh, what's going to happen, how big Z is going to be when I get up there. Uh, maybe you want this Z max to be a little bit bigger. I'm going to set mine at 9 here. Uh, you can change the tick marks so that they are only every 2 or whatever. I'm going to leave that every 1 unit and I'm going to leave my scale factor of 1, but you can change that a little bit. The lower Z clip and upper Z clip, you might notice in this picture, the default setting here, where I graph that paraboloid, there's a box around the coordinate axes and the Z axis was originally set for going negative 2 to 2. But if you look at this graph, you can see that that surface is graphed way up above uh, Z equals 2. That's because the upper Z clip is set to 4. So if you want your graph to stop wherever the top of your axis is, you want to change that. Uh, you can change the focus point so that you're not really focused on the origin if you want. I'm going to go ahead and leave that alone. And then if I click graph, we should see a new graph of this. Uh, all right, and you can rotate that around. You can look inside. Mine's really kind of high on the screen here, so I'm going to use Alt arrow on my keyboard and arrow down. If I just use the arrow keys, I end up rotating the object around, uh, which you can also do, so sometimes that's helpful. So Alt arrow. If you're not sure, there are some help features. You can go in and look at the help features, and there's some uh, information 
on the website. There's a help manual if you want to look at some other things to figure out how to change some settings here. Uh, one of the other things though on these graphs, I don't really like this box around the coordinate axes. I sometimes like to get rid of that, so I'm going to get rid of that. I don't need to look at the X and Y, Z axis scale. I can leave that out if I want, but sometimes it clutters the screen. So if I just click on that same box where I clicked before, it collapses that window. All right, and then if I click on the window next to that, uh, I've got all kinds of options that I can have here. One of them is show box, which I'm going to uncheck. Uh, so now that box went away, so it looks more like something you might draw if you were drawing this surface. Uh, and then I'm just going to click, whoops, show box is unchecked, and I'm going to click on this box to get rid of that. Uh, there are all kinds of other things that you can do here on the graph. Uh, there are some settings. If I go here to this wheel over to the side, this settings, there's all kinds of things I can do here. I can make the surface more transparent. So we see when I slid that down, it looks more transparent. I'm going to put it back where it was. Uh, I can click hide my edges. Watch what happens when I do that. All right, so now it looks more like a smooth surface. You don't have those contour lines uh, showing that. I'm going to go ahead and put them back. Uh, you can do wireframe only, and it'll get rid of the color. It's a little bit difficult to look at, so I don't want that. I want normal appearance. Uh, you can also make constant color. It's, it's sometimes hard to see in 3D. And I'm going to click the X here for that. So the nice thing about this app is that it's web-based, so you, as long as you can open a browser, I'm using Google Chrome, but as long as you can open a browser window, you can use this. Also, it's hard to break. So there are times where you might do something and uh, it gets hung up in calculations. All you got to do is close the browser window, open a new one, and you reset the app. I've rarely had that happen to me, only when I've tried to make it uh, do some really awful kind of computation here. Uh, one other thing I want to say, notice that this equation is z equals, and so in the default setting here, that needs to be z equals. Uh, but I can also have other kinds of surfaces. So if I don't want z equals f of x, y, if I want x equals a function of yz or y equals a function of xz. I've got some options there. I also maybe am interested in just typing in an equation of a surface. So if I were going to graph a sphere, for example, solving an equation of a sphere for z or x or y is not easy so uh, and is not algebraically nice. So sometimes if you have something like a sphere, maybe you want to go to implicit surface here and then you can type in an equation uh, here. So uh, I'm going to just change this equation a little bit to make it the equation of a sphere. I'm just going to make this a sphere of radius 1 centered at the origin. And then if I want to see that, I'm going to check that box. Notice I see that there with the other one and uncheck the paraboloid. Uh, you'll notice my sphere looks kind of faceted here. It doesn't really look very round. That has to do with how many points it's plotted and how it has changed those settings. I could change the window so that I'm back looking a little closer to the origin where we originally were. And a graph. All right, so that helped a little bit close that. Uh, the other thing that I maybe can do to make it look a little more uh, smooth is change this number of cubes per axis. So when I increase that, it's going to tell it to plot more points. So that it takes more computing time, and that's when sometimes you can get hung up uh, and it can get hung up in the processing if I make this number really, really huge. But if I make it a little bit more, see, I'll just double it from what it was. So now we have 32. So you can see there it plotted more grid lines, plotted more points, more grid lines, and it looks more like a sphere uh, that we were expecting it to look like. All right, so again, I want you to be sure that you know how to graph things uh, without using the computer, but there will be times where you might decide that you want to also look at a graph on a computer and this is just a really nice app that's set up to use a lot of nice things that we'll study in this class.